Today we are covering 15 weapons and armor sets you can get early on in the starting area of Limgrave, including some very good light armor sets. I'll be showing you how to obtain everything in this video and then telling you how each armor set and weapon compares against others in Elden Ring. Are they good, bad, or worth collecting in the first place? And what hidden and useful abilities do they have that are good for your character build? If you missed the first episode with another 10 armors and weapons, it's linked down below in the description. And if you don't want to miss the next make sure you subscribe with the bell icon my plan is to literally cover every single armor and weapon in elden ring and since many of the armors and weapons in this video are farmable don't forget that you can increase your drop chance dramatically using a combination of the silver pickled foulfoot consumable silver tear helmet and silver scarab talisman all of which can be found in the description below for a total of 133 more discovery rates which is double the starting amount so starting out we're going to be getting the caden armor set so we can become a true vikinger these enemies also drop the dismounter sword as well now i'm assuming you've already unlocked the starting area of the map if you haven't there's a guide on how to do that link down below in the description but starting from the first step resting spot of grace we're going to head all the way north past the church through this forest to the gate front ruin and then just to the right we're going to be starting our farming location guide from the ag hill lake north the same location as yesterday's video Video if you miss that once at this resting spot we're going to go northeast between these two little sort of ruin bricks here we're going to put a waypoint just there so we're going to head over here but there's going to be two horseback riders around this area just wandering around and then there's going to be another one just over here as well so there's three guys on horseback and there's three guys on foot in this location just here we're going to be killing them all six in total and then we'll loop back around to the resting spot of grace just here. That's basically our farming route for the Caden armor set. You can see the gate front ruins behind me. We're literally going northeast to our waypoint you can see in the distance just over there. So as you can see, these Caden troops all have a chance of dropping the armor set using my two-handed strong attack with this particular build. Since it does such poise damage, it's very easy to take them out with it. He has dropped the Caden gauntlets. And then just over here towards the camp that we have our waypoint at, there's another horseman just here. So let's go ahead and take out this guy like so. And then we have the troop from the camp itself. So I'm going to go ahead and jump up this wall here. And you can see there's several people in this camp. But if you actually go around the back here and approach from the back entrance, you can actually go into stealth mode and we can easily backstab this guy just here before he can react. And now we've got some frozen resin, which is also a possible drop. And take out the wolves. Just here, you can also grab yourself the Armourer's Cookbook 1 as well. And then outside the entrance here, we're going to have another person that you could sneak attack, but I didn't bother. So we take out this final foot Caden Knight just here at the entrance. And then we also kill his wolf. And he's also dropped the Caden Armour chess piece. And then after that, we're going to turn around towards the southwest and basically head back towards the resting spot of Grace while taking out the final mounted Caden Warrior. And then we would have killed all six of them. And he's dropped the Caden Helm and the Caden Trousers. And now we're going to go back to the resting spot of grace just over here and repeat this process until we have the full armor set. Somehow we got the whole Caden armor set in one run. So let's now review the armor set and then the Caden weapon as well. Now the Caden armor set is a medium to lightweight armor set. And while it's not the best armor set for its weight class, it is a decent armor set that looks incredibly cool. And you can get it very early on. Ultimately though, I love this armor set because you're essentially playing as a Norse raider caped in furs. Next, we have the Dismounter Sword, which was also dropped from the Caden Cell Swords as well as the armor set. It's one of the earlier curved great swords you can acquire with a physical damage of 138, decent for its weight of 10. Once fully upgraded, it has a C scaling in strength. But while not the best great sword in the game, its moveset is notable. The Dismounter Sword has one of the best special skills in the game, the Spinning Slash, which only costs 6 focus points. 
It's basically a spinning attack, which hits everybody in a 360 degree radius around you. If you tap it twice, you can spin twice in a row. The Caden Swords can also be dual wielded for even more carnage, since you can easily obtain multiple dismounter swords. The light attack combination, which is understandably slow for such a big sword, as you guys can see. But then we have the power attack. If you attack once and then twice, you basically do this spin attack. However, if you attack once like this and then hold it down, you'll do this spinning attack into a slam. Let's do it again. Go one and then hold it down and then spinning attack slam. So it's quite interesting that there's this variation to the strong attack, which is kind of useful in certain situations. Then we have the jumping light attack, which is a jumping slash. Then we have the jumping heavy attack, which is basically like a big ground pound. Also, on horseback, this weapon is just fantastic because of its super long reach. Next, we're going to be obtaining the highwayman armor and a bunch of weapons. So we're right here at the Aghil Lake North. Then we're going to go south down this pathway all the way down to the bottom of this lake. Put one waypoint just there. Then we're going to head north all the way up this river in the canyon. Then put another waypoint just here. So as you can see, our first waypoint is number one. We're just going to head down the path here over to that waypoint and then we're going to come sort of slightly to the right towards the lake down this hill here and obviously skip ahead if you already know how to get to this specific cave that i'm talking about just head down the hill until you reach the lake and then you're going to want to come around to the left here and underneath this giant bridge to the north head underneath the bridge and just ignore all of the enemies underneath it some will try and drop down on you as long as you're riding past them you have nothing to fear head down the canyon all the way and you'll find a, a secret hidden cave on your left after the trees here just go ahead and get off your horse also if you've never been here before you'll get invaded by a phantom who will drop the reduvia dagger guide on that below but for now we're going to enter into the cave i didn't actually bring a torch with me so hopefully you guys can see all right you'll find a resting spot of grace here for murkwater cave and we are just here on the map in murkwater cave now and inside here we're going to go all the way down into the cave and in this first room we'll find a bunch of highwaymen which we want to kill as you can see he's dropped an item he's dropped the short dagger and then there's some more just down the bottom here they're very slow attacking and super easy to kill so you shouldn't have a problem taking them out and after you've killed them, just run back to the resting spot, which is just down the corridor. And then once you've rested, just run back and kill them all again. There are seven in total. And these highwaymen have a chance of dropping the full highwayman set, including the highwayman hood, the highwayman cloth armor, and finally the highwayman gauntlets, and also a dagger and short sword. The Highwayman set doesn't actually include any trousers. Also in this cave, you can explore the other passageway, which will lead you to Patches, which is kind of like a little boss fight. Basically, you'll go inside the fog wall here. There will be a chest right in front of you that you can loot. And inside it, you will find the cloth garb armor and the cloth trousers. Patches will then appear and engage you in a boss fight. After taking him down, you have a choice to spare him or not. Make sure you spare him, otherwise you'll stop his whole quest line and you'll miss out on him as a merchant. Then you can just come over here and return to the entrance. Once you've rested and you come back, speak to Patches, and then you can go ahead and open his store. He'll actually sell you some other weapons, like the parrying dagger for 1,600 runes, the horse crest wooden shield, for 1000 runes and also margaret shackle which is a unique item that imprisons margaret once you use it making that boss fight very easy before i show you anything else let's go over what we found at farming location 2 starting out with the highwayman armor set the highwayman armor only includes the headpiece chest piece and gauntlets most of it is just a hideously stained and ragged armor set which was originally worn by foot soldiers who turned to banditry the hood however is the main focal point of the armor set that actually looks pretty cool now armor value wise this armor set is rather pitiful with the hood being okay at best then we have the cloth armor including the trousers and shirt 
which is worth a mention. Next we have the short sword which doesn't seem like it would be any good and it has the lowest damage for its weight class but it is effective in many ways. Now the short sword does have a special ability which lets you use a high kick attack and when you use this against enemies who are trying to block you or guarding you can actually break a foe's stance and then finish them off with a critical attack or even kick them off a cliff. And it's that attack which lets you follow up with a critical attack which makes this weapon so effective. The power attack on the short sword gives a piercing thrust attack which is pretty effective. Alternatively you just have basic slashing light attacks. Now the dagger is actually a very useful weapon but a lot of people don't realize it to pretty much every single build. Firstly it has a physical base damage of 74 and it also has a critical damage of 130 because it's a dagger. So if you ever parry or guard block or backstab an enemy it will do additional critical damage compared to other weapons. But the most important part of the dagger is its skill quick step. This skill is prized by the crafty and fleet of foot. Perform a quick step maneuver that allows for circling around locked on targets. So as you can see it basically allows you to move like this for a tiny FP cost and this move is actually really effective compared to dodge rolling like this or backstepping like this. The quick step is absolutely massive is it in its reach. Now if you've been struggling with something like Scarlet Rot or any poison areas that poison you and stop you from rolling quickly or sprinting, the quick step is actually a very useful ability. Quick step through the whole area super fast without ever getting damaged at all, which makes it super safe to travel through these areas without ending up getting poisoned or Scarlet Rot. Next we have the Horse Crest Wooden Shield. Interestingly the description reads, a tall medium sized wooden shield, light for its size and easy to handle. The circular horse head design invokes a swift gallop. Now I actually timed and tested this and I can confirm the horse head shield does not seem to affect your horse's gallop speed which I was really disappointed about because that would have been a really cool secret to share with you guys. The shield though does weigh 3.5 and it puts it very much in the average range for its weight category and it can be used merely because you like the pattern on the shield. Beyond that it's not really particularly special. Now the parrying dagger which we get from patches as well is very interesting. It does less damage than the dagger, only one less damage, and you cannot quick step with it. However, it has a skill to actually parry. So if used in the place of a shield in your left hand, you can then use the parry ability. Now in testing, I found that it seems to have less parry frames than the buckler shield, for example, making it harder to parry with because essentially you have a smaller window of opportunity to land that parry. However, the build-up frames or the time to start the animation before that parry window engages seems to be less. So essentially the time to parry is quicker but the window of opportunity is less. So as long as you're used to your parry timings it can be a much better weapon to parry with. And it also has the pro that you can use it offensively with light attacks in combat. Parrying dagger can also be equipped in the other hand to do a strong attack with it or the same quick attack that it has in the other hand but it's kind of useless to do this it doesn't really help you out now we've got everything from murkwater cave we're going to head to farming spot number three starting here at the ag hill lake north we'll come southeast down the pathway across this bridge just here and then we're going to head north up this dirt track and we're going to carry on following this dirt track until we get to this resting point of mistwood outskirts I'm going to go ahead and walk over there right now just so you guys can see where it is. So we're starting just over here and then we're going to start heading over. Now obviously you can skip ahead if you already know where it is or how to get there. We're just going to head across the bridge here and carry on going towards the east. And once you cross the bridge just on the left you'll see there's like a dirt path here. We're going to start following that dirt path to the north and we're literally just going to carry on following this path now until we get to the next waypoint which is all the way over there. We're still following that path but we're now heading east over to that waypoint that we already marked on the map. And once you get to this waypoint just behind the little rocks here you will find another resting spot of grace and you're going to go ahead and unlock this one just here. So now we're just here on the map at the Mistwood outskirts. And we're going to be farming this location just here for the Noble Weapons and Aristocrat Armour Set. 
So as soon as you rest at this spot, you'll see these NPCs right in front of you. These are basically nobles who are now tarnished. And we can just walk right over to them and kill them. However, so each aristocrat has different potential drops. Firstly, we have this guy who has a feather in his hat. He is a golden estoc with a detailed hill. This is a soldier aristocrat, and he has a chance to drop the aristocrat hat, the green aristocrat coat, and the noble estoc, which we'll talk more about later. Secondly, we have this guy who is a common aristocrat. He has a normal looking sword and a yellow jacket on. He also has a chance of dropping the noble slender sword and the aristocrat garb, the alternative version which doesn't have a cape. Thirdly, we have this aristocrat over here. He has no weapons and he doesn't drop anything. After you've killed these guys, you're going to head northwards, back up the road just to the west here. But it's not north, I lied, it's west. Carry on heading up the road and eventually you'll come across these aristocrats over here. Now you'll see one sorcerer and you're going to want to take all of these guys out. As you can see, this character just here is a sorcerer. Specifically though, the sorcerer who we've not spoken about, he has the potential to drop the following. The aristocrat headband, which kind of looks a bit like a crown. The aristocrat garb, which has a cape. And the aristocrat boots. And then finally, also the glintstone staff. Now the only other way to get a glintstone staff is by starting the game as the prisoner class. Now, once you farm this party of aristocrats, you can either return back to the Mistwood outskirt resting spot and continuously just run this little route of farming these aristocrats. Or alternatively, you can also get the soldier armor set just a bit further down the road over here. And then there's one more aristocrat armor set I need to show you guys. But now we're going to head south to the waypoint that we pretty much just retracing our steps and you'll see these soldiers that we ran past earlier on the road. So we're going to go ahead and kill these guys. And the guy with the crossbow has a chance of dropping a crossbow or bolts. All the other soldiers have a chance of dropping the foot soldier armor set including the Foot Soldier Cap, Foot Soldier Chain Drained Tabard, and Foot Soldier Gauntlets, and finally the Foot Soldier Greaves. So we're now just here where we killed that Soldier Patrol, and what we can do is fast travel back to the Mistwood outskirts and just farm the Aristocrat Armor Set and also the Soldier Patrol, but there's actually one more Aristocrat Armor Set to get. So what we can do to get that is come back to this bridge over here, and then just to the south down this road, there's actually going to be a carriage that starts around here. This is a black carriage that has an entourage of noble Aristocrats, two of which have a banner, and they drop the rest of the armor set. It's actually a great location to farm the aristocrat set as well. And just above in the waypoint ruin, you're going to find another resting spot and you can just farm this location. So from the waypoint ruins resting spot, you're just gonna head outside up the stairs and you'll come out in this ruin and then you can just come out this door here and here's the black carriage walking on by. Now, as you can see, there's a few more nobles with swords that you can farm, but specifically to get the rest of this armor set, we want to be killing these characters with the horns and banners. Now, if you just stand up here and shoot them all, you are relatively safe. But this is the guy with the banner that we specifically want to be killing. And he'll drop the old aristocrat cow, the old aristocrat gown, and the old artisan shoes as well. Now we've farmed all of the noble weapons and the aristocrat armor set variants, let's review them all. And since the aristocrat armor sets have so many possible variations, I thought I'd showcase you the fashion on the right hand side and the stats of all the armor pieces separately on the left hand side. And those stats are all from the Fextra Life wiki. It's a very valuable resource. As for how they compare versus other armor sets though with similar pieces, the old aristocrat 
Pratt shoes are actually the best shoes in the game for their weight category, which honestly surprised me. And then the Aristocrat gown also has the highest physical resistance for its weight class as well, only being outclassed on its magical defense. The armor set looks tremendous as well with the gold detail patterns on it. It typically is used by the older traveling nobles in the lore. And then the old aristocrat cow is one of the best physical defense options for its weight class as well. But it looks really bad in my opinion, so I'd probably never wear it. In particular, the sleeves are really nice and sort of flowy in this outfit, and it does look really nice when you're moving around in the game. Next, we have the aristocrat garb, the altered version, which is without the cape. So it's actually slightly lighter. And for its weight class, it has the highest physical defenses, which I was also pretty surprised about. Alternatively, we have the aristocrat garb with the cape. This is the only armor in the game that actually weighs 4.9, oddly specific. So it may be useful as an option to get the perfect equip load. Then we have the crown-like aristocrat headband. This is the only helmet in its weight class as well, and it offers very good magic resistance for its weight, and it can be worn to show off your noble status. The aristocrat boots also are the only armor in their weight class, but again, they have decent resistances across the board. Next, we have the aristocrat coat, one of the coolest looking armor pieces in this getup and it's actually a very competitive option in its weight class for physical resistance contested only by the leather armor it really depends what you're looking for i personally think it's flowing material when you move and the intricate golden detailing looks fantastic this coat would usually be worn by a noble with a knight connection in their ancestry line finally the aristocrat hat with the feather is a good option in its weight class for its decent stats across the board and it looks rather dapper. Now, as for the Glintstone Staff, comparing it to the Meteorite Staff, which you can also get at the start of the game if you followed my best starting mage build, the Meteorite Staff has an S ranking, which makes it a heck of a lot better for damage. And pretty much most things in the game outclass the Glintstone Staff. If you look at the description, it doesn't actually have any special skill, and it also doesn't boost Glintstone Sorceries specifically. Therefore, it's not really a great option for a staff. Even the Astrologer staff comes out on top compared to the Glintstone staff. So really, you'd probably never bother getting the Glintstone staff. Next, we have the Noble Slender Sword. Starting out, this has the worst damage for its weight, but once fully upgraded, it actually has a B scaling in dexterity, making it an interesting option considering its moveset is quite nice narrow blade carried by the wandering nobles made to be easy to wield and daubed with gold from tip to tail now the noble slender sword is actually quite a versatile weapon simply because it has the skill square off how this works is you go ahead and activate the skill and you hold your sword level and you can move around like this and then if you go ahead and light attack you do an upward slash now this upward slash actually attacks through people blocking with their shield to break their guards. Alternatively, you can heavy attack like this and you'll do a running charge and then upwards thrust, which can obviously catch people off guard. The weapon's light attack is just side to side slashing like the standard straight sword. We also have the heavy attack, which is also a thrust like the straight sword and then a upward slash. And then we have the jumping attack and the jumping light attack, none of which are really memorable. Next, we have the Noble's S-Tog, which looks incredibly beautiful, but it has a very low damage. It's pretty much the worst thrusting sword in the game, to be honest. But damn, it looks really nice. The Noble s -talk has the skill Impaling Thrust. This skill lets piercing armaments overcome enemy shields as well. You basically build in power and then you lunge forward for a strong thrust that pierces an enemy guard. As you can see in action, it is a very long thrust. And then you can follow up with some very quick light attacks, even though you only attack forwards, which can be quite annoying depending if you're taking on multiple enemies, since it doesn't have a slashing attack. Alternatively, you have the power attack, which does do a slash to deal with groups of enemies enemies more easily. Next we have the soldier's crossbow. It's actually the lightest crossbow with minimal requirements to use but it really does lack in accuracy. The only advantage over a bow in my opinion is the ability to ready a shot and fire that shot immediately but then obviously it takes longer to reload than a bow so you're already sort of down on your DPS. 
Also, it's just simply harder to aim than a bow. But I'm also bad with crossbows as well. Either way, if you're using a crossbow, you probably won't be using the soldier's crossbow for that long. The crossbow does, however, have a skill, which is kick, which isn't that ideal to use because obviously you want to maintain range, but it is very situational. Sometimes if you want to guard block and then fire a crossbow into someone's face, it can work. Finally, though, we have the foot soldier's armor set. It's a very middle of the range average armor set, and it really isn't much to shout home about. So I'm only really mentioning it to cover every single armor set in the entire game and to say we've done that. Speaking of which, if you want to check out the next video in our playlist to obtain all of the armor sets in Limgrave and also discussing which ones are good and bad and which ones are worth actually picking up in general, you can find the next episode linked down below in the description or even the previous episode as well if you missed it.